Welcome to our channel. Here we will cover many topics related to compiler design like compilers, analysis of the source program, the phases of compiler, consensus of compiler, the grouping of phases, compiler construction tools. First do like and do like, share and subscribe to our channel. So compiler design. This is one of the most important subject of computer science. As you already know about some real world compilers like GCC, Java C, MinJW. Now, introduction to compiler. So, what is compiler? Compiler is a program that reads a program written in one language that is a source language like C, C++ and Java and translate it into an equivalent programming language that is a target program that is a machine code or a binary code that is in the form of zeros and ones and it also generates some errors like lexical error, synthetic error, semantic errors. So here is a source code in C, uh, the basic hello world program and it converts it into binary code that is in the form of zeros and ones or a machine code using compiler. Now history of compiler. Around 1950s, the first compiler started to appear. The first 14 compiler, it took 18 staff years to implement. These like Lexime and tokens and three address code. So first one is Lexime, the character sequence forming a token. So what is token? Token is like the smallest unit of a program, like literals, keywords, operators, constant. Literals like identifiers, variables, keywords like if, else, for, while, do while, break, continue, many more. Operators like arithmetic operators, plus, minus, multiplication, division, uh, relational operators and or uh, uh, assignment operator is equal to and constants like all real numbers. Three address code, it, it consists of a sequence of instruction, each, each of which has at most three operands. Example here like a is equals to b plus c a b c r operands is equal to n plus r operators now the analysis synthesis model of compilation there are two parts of compilation the first one is analysis where the source program converts into constraint pieces and creates an intermediate representation and another one is a synthesis part where the construct desired target program from the intermediate representation. Now this is a special kind of tree called syntax tree where it is used in which each node tree represents uh, as operation and the chil child children of a node represent the argument of the operation. Here the expression position is equal to initial plus rate into 60 where position is equal to initial plus rate into 60. Now, we discuss about structure editors. A structure editor takes uh, as input a sequence of commands to build a source program. The structure editor not only performs the text creation and modification functions of an ordinary text editor, but it also analyzes the program text, putting an appropriate hierarchical uh, structure on the source program. Uh, if we write do, then automatically it generates while condition here. Now, pretty printers. Pretty printers analyzes a program and print in, in such a way that the structure of the program becomes clearly visible. For example, comments may appear in a special form that is in the form of italic. Okay, if you write in Python, then it also has some font colors and it is in a green color. Okay, so then statements may appear with an amount of indentation proportion to the depth of their nesting. So this is a pretty printers. Now static checkers. Uh, static checker reads a program, analyzes it and attempts to discover potential bugs without running the program. So here the example of static checker may detect the part of the source program can never be executed. Now interpreters. Interpreters is like the instead of producing a Target program as a translation, an interpreter performs the operation implied by a source program for, for an assignment statement. For example, uh, Python, Perl, MATLAB, they are using interpreters. So it also converts source code. Using the interpreter, it generates some output. Okay, now the analysis of the source program. So there are three phases. The first one is linear phase, the second one is hierarchical phase, 
and third one is the semantic phase. So what is linear analysis? In which the stream of characters making up the source program is read from left to right and grouped into tokens. Tokens means literals, keywords, operators, constant and that are sequence of characters having a collective meaning, have some meaning. Okay. So the next one is a hierarchical analysis uh, in which characters or tokens now we generate we can get some uh, tokens and from the tokens are grouped and hierarchically into nested collection with collective meaning the next one is a semantic analysis where in which uh, certain checks are performed to ensure that the components of a program fit together meaningfully the so language processing system uh, that is a character source program then it comes to a preprocessor uh, source program in it compilation, uh, it will generate uh, assembly language. After assembler, it uh, generates machine code that is a relocatable machine code. After uh, linking and loading, uh, that is a library locatable object files, it generates absolute machine code. Now, uh, we will discuss about uh, uh, lexical analysis. That is a linear analysis or a scanning. So in a compiler, linear analysis is called also called linear analysis and scanning. And for example, in linear analysis, the characters in the assignment is taken. Okay. So here, position is equals to initial plus rate into 60, where position, initial, and rate are identifiers and equal to plus and multiplication are operators. The blank separating the characters of these tokens would normally be eliminated during lexical analysis. Okay, now we will discuss about syntax analysis. So what is syntax analysis? Hierarchical analysis is called parsing or syntax analysis. It involves grouping the tokens of the source program into a grammatical phases that are used by the tokens of by the compiler to synthesis output. So this is an example of uh, the expression like position is equals to uh, uh, initial plus rate into 60. So here the it shows in the form of in the form of parse tree. Okay, now we will discuss about semantic analysis. So in semantic analysis, here the example like uh, int x is equals to twelve point three. As you already know, twelve point three is it a it is a data type of uh, float. Okay, twelve point three is a floating number. So it it will store in an integer. So it's not possible. So int are not compatible with float. Okay. Uh, the another example is int a is equals to hello, yeah, where hello is a group of characters that is a string. It can't be stored in uh, int So this uh, the, it generates semantic errors. This both examples are the errors of semantic errors. Okay. Now the phases of compiler. There are basically six phases. So uh, uh, this is a whole phases of compiler. This involves table manager. Then it shows program. It have lexical error analyzer, syntax analyzer. Semantic Analyzer, Intermediate Code Generation, Code op Optimizer, Code Generator and Target Program. So we will discuss each and everything in details. So first one is a Symbol Table Management. Error Detection and Reporting. Each phase can encounter errors. However, after detecting an error, a phase must somehow deal with that error so that compilation can proceed, allowing further errors in the source program to be detected. There are two types of errors, basically compile time error and run time error. So what is compile time error? It is an error that occurs when a program is compiled. And what is run time error? The run time error refers to an error that takes place while executing a program. So compile time error has basically three subtypes that is lexical phase error, Synthetic error, semantic errors. So, lexical phase error, uh, a sequence of characters does, does not match the pattern of any tokens. And what is syntactic error? An error in the syntax of a code or a source language enters by a programmer. And what is a semantic error? A programmer, a programmer error that arises or or from a misunderstanding of may or effect of some. Uh, Constant functions of our error handling. So there are basically three types of functions that are detection, recovery, 
and reporting. So what is function of an error handler? It refers to the response and recovery procedure from error conditioning present in a software application. So this is a function of now we will discuss about intermediate code generation. So after syntax and semantic analysis, some compiler generates an explicit intermediate code generation of the source program. We can think of this intermediate representation as a program for an abstract machine. This intermediate representation should have two important properties. The first one, it should be easy to produce and easy to translate into the target program. The intermediate representation can have a variety of forms. Okay, so this is a, a, as you see in this screen, the expression position is equal to initial plus read into history goes for a lexical analysis analyzer. So what is the function of a lexical analyzer? It breaks that this syntax into a series of tokens or a group of tokens in the form of literals, keywords, constants, and operators, and also removing some white spaces or comments in the source code. Then it generates this id1 is equal to id2 plus id3 into 60, where id1 represents position, id2 represents initial, and id3 represents rate. The constant is the same. Then it goes for syntax analyzer. So what is the role of syntax analyzer? It takes the input from a lexical analyzer and in the form of token streams, it takes it. Okay. After that, it generates parse tree. As you already discussed about what is parse tree and it comes through a uh, semantic analyzer so what is the main function of semantic analyzer so it makes sure that uh, the declarations and the st statements of program are semantically correct and it must be meaningful so here it converts uh, the real number the real constant uh, that is it is stored in in teaser it converts into a real number so now uh, it generates uh, comes through intermediate code generator so what is the role of intermediate code generator it receive input from its predecessor phase and semantic analyzer and the form of annotated syntax tree okay and uh, it generates some temporary variables uh, like here you see uh, tem here temporary one uh, it, it is a variable it is stores int into real this is a function where 60 is converted into a real number uh, then it generates another variable that is a temporary 2 variable where id3 into temporary 1 means id3 is a read into a temporary 1 that is 60 is multiplied here. Now the another variable temporary 3 where id2 that is uh, initial plus read into 60 where this part will uh, add here replace this temporary variable 2. Then id1 is equal to temporary 3 where initial pl uh, position plus initial into 60. So this is a, a whole code and after it comes to code optimizer we are at our program transformation technique which tries to improve the intermediate code by making a fewer uh, consume fewer okay like it consumes less CPU memory so that faster running may appear okay so this uh, temporary variable int into real that is a 60 converted into a real number and the id1 that is a position is equals to id2 plus temporary one that is id2 is a um, initial plus uh, temporary one that number is a 60 okay it uh, generate this now it comes to code generated so the final step uh, where this is the final fa phase of this uh, whole translation of a statement where it decides that what values to keep in the registers so this is the whole code of a register to store the uh, source program so this figure is a whole translation of a statement so, so the code optimization phase attempts to imp attempt to improve the intermediate code so that the faster running machine code will result. This is a great variation in the amount of code optimization. Different compiler performs in those that do the most called optimization optimizing compilers. Okay, a significant fraction of the time of the compiler spent on these phase. However, uh, there are simple optimization that significantly improve the running time of the target program without slowing down, um, slowing down the compilation too much. Now, the another phase uh, here, as you see the example, uh, we are temporary one that is temporary one variable uh, converts in teaser uh, type to real uh, that is sixty as a real number, and the id one is equal to id two plus temporary one. Okay, so it. Uh, uh, generate some uh, it optimizes the source program and it then it also do some 
to running part much faster than uh, another phases now another phase is a code generation uh, where the final phase of the compiler is a generation of target code where consisting of normally of a relocatable machine code or assembly codes uh, where uh, you see this example uh, the first and uh, second operand of each instruction specify a source and destination respectively the first phase uh, the f and h instruction tell as uh, tell us that uh, instruction deal with a floating point number here you see that the f is a uh, all it shows that it is all of floating point number and this code moves the content of the address from id3 into register 2 that is id2 okay and then multiplies into with real console that is a 60 and uh, the hashtag here the hashtag uh, signifies uh, that 60 is to be treated as a constraint okay that's why here we use hashtag. I think uh, some commands are clear to you. And uh, the third instruction moves id2 into register1. The r1 and r2 are registers. Hashtag signifies this. it uh, shows that another number is a constant. And the f shows that uh, it is a floating point number. And is a move command to move something multiplication and our normal op normal normal commands as you already know about it and uh, the third instruction moves id2 the third line uh, into a register 1 and add it to the value previously computed in register 1 okay so this is a final the value in register 1 uh, is moved into address of id1 so the code implemented in this assignment now Cousins of a compiler. So we will discuss about cousins of compilers. So there are many many cousins, preprocessors, two pass assembly, assemblers, and loaders and the compiler. The first one is a preprocessor where preprocessors produces input to compilers. They have many power functions. It performs many functions like macro processing, where the processor may allow a user to define macros that are shortened for longer construction. The another uh, function is file inclusion, where a processor may include header files into the program, and like uh, global dot h that has to include global dot h. This is a uh, another function of preprocessor. The another one is a rational preprocessor, where the processor arguments older languages with more modern flow of control and data structuring facilities. And last, last one function of these preprocessor are like uh, language extensions. Like this processor attempt to add capabilities to the language by what amount to build in macros. For example, the language equal is a database query language embedded in C. Okay. Now, now the second one is the assemblers. Some compilation produce assembly code as an uh, that is a passed to an assembler for further processing. Assembly code is a, a mnemonic version of the machine code and in which names are used instead of binary codes for operations and names are also given in the memory address as we have already uh, discussed uh, previously and the another third one is a two pass assembly. The simplest form of assembler makes two pass over the input where a pass consists of a reading and input file ones. Okay. The next last one is loaders and link editors. Usually a program called a loader performs the two functions of loading and link editing. The process of loading consists of taking a relocatable machine code, altering the relocatable addresses and the placing the altered instruction and data in a memory at a proper location. So this is all about the grouping of phases, front and, and back end. Often the phases are Collected into a front end and back end. The front end consists of three. Those phases are a part of phases that depends primarily on the source language and are largely independent of the target machine. Uh, these normally include lexical and syntactic analysis, the creation of the symbol table, semantic analysis, and generation of intermediate code. The back end includes those portion of the compiler that depends on the target machine and generally these portion do not depend on the source language and just the intermediate language. The another one is a passes. Passes are the, it is a complete traversal of the source program. It is a two type that is a multi pass and a single pass. 
it, it is a common for cellular phases to be grouped into a one pass and for the activity of these passes to be interleaved during that pass. Example, uh, lexical analysis, uh, syntax analysis, semantic analysis, and pass. Okay, uh, these all uh, in, and code, intermediate code generations uh, might be grouped into a single pass or a one pass. Another one is uh, reducing the number of passes. So, in uh, reducing the number of passes, it is desirable to have a relatively few passes since it takes time to read and uh, write uh, intermediate files. So, uh, the intermediate file and uh, the target code generation can be uh, used into one pass uh, using, a uh, using a technique that is called uh, backpatching. Tools. The first one is a parser generators, uh, scanner generators, syntax generator translation agents, automatic code generators and data engines. The first one is parser generators. These produce syntax analyzers normally from input that is based on the context free grammar. If you read uh, theory of computation, you already know about context free grammar. The next one is the scanner generator. These automatically generate lexical analyzer normally from a specification based on regular expressions. The next one is the syntax directed translation engines, where these produce collection of routines that walk the parse tree. And the fourth one is automatic code generators. Uh, such a tool takes a collection of rules that defines a translation of each operation of the intermediate language into the machine language for the target machine. And the last one is the data flow engines, uh, where the much of the information needed to perform good code optimization involves data flow analysis, the gathering of information, which is done by data flow engines. So this is a compiler construction tools. This video is completely done. We will cover each and everything in details. And so happy learning and thank you so much for watching this video. Please do like and subscribe to our channel.